Welcome to Off the Cuff, episode 12. That's right, one year. Yeah, that's cool. Uh, we would love for you to give some comments below on some questions for next month. But for this month, we are going to answer your questions about the pad wall, the Arajitsu mm. temple, and the new BrickLink uh, train station. Oh, okay. So we have some fun things to think about. I'm kind of excited because if I were to get these questions off the cuff, I would totally like freeze. But Colin has, has an amazing ability to think quickly. So we'll be testing that out today. Yeah, I think we're going to be testing it out quite a bit. All right. Our first question is about the Erejitsu Temple. We had actually several people asking about it, so I'm just going to lump them all together. First of all, do you have it? Secondly, how does it fit in with the Ninjago city sets? Okay. And thirdly, how does it compare to the new temple? Ooh, so good questions. I do not have the Erjutsu temple, which is one of the sets I regret not buying. Now, I want to make it clear that there are plenty of sets that I've wanted over the years. That's probably common with everybody watching this video. And of course, finances and space and all those other constraints kind of come together to not get me to buy it. And so I wanted that set pretty badly, ended up buying other sets like modulars and whatnot. So I don't have it. It's definitely on my list of sets that I wish I could get at some point, knowing that it's really expensive on the secondary market and not being able to prepare for this. I don't really know how much, but it's significantly higher than the original retail price. Um, as for how it might fit in Ninjago City, I think pretty similarly to the Tournament Temple City, which is that it's not something you're going to be able to fit in just seamlessly. It doesn't have the opportunity to uh, connect directly to those sets because it doesn't have the Technic pins. Keep in mind that the Air Jitsu Temple was released before the Ninjago City line came out in 2017, so I don't know if they really had that in mind when they were designing that particular temple. So I think what you would end up having is a standalone structure kind of off in the ocean and or in the sea, right? And, you know, similar to what you might do with the Tournament Temple City, you can, you know, have that there. I do think, to the third question, I think it would pair very nicely with the Tournament Temple City. I think they're both very similar in terms of their use of angles. They've got these bridges, uh, they open back, and they allow you to do a lot of cool things with them, such that you might be able to make a more reasonable layout with just that temple and Tournament Temple City, as well as some of the other Ninjago temples. Those aren't the only two temples that LEGO has released. They've got some other big ones for Ninjago that I think look pretty good, but they're not quite to the same level of detail as the two that we're talking about here. So overall, I wish I had that set. I think you'd still have to do a lot of changes to it, modifications to get to fit with Ninjago City, or add a lot of pieces to get the C, you know, all the dark green and black um, plates with the light blue, transparent blue tiles on top. So it'd be quite the investment to do that, but tempting. Okay, our next question is about Pick a Brick Wall. Ooh, yeah. The last time you bought bricks on Pick a Brick Wall, yep. what did you do with them? Oh, so um, a couple things. One of them was to put them in my storage bins here. So <laughs> one of the challenges that we have as a small YouTube channel, and I think probably everybody deals with this unless you're one of the biggest YouTube channels, is it's hard to buy both brand new sets and pieces to build your own creations. And so if you buy brand new sets and you want to display them, then those are pieces that you can't put into your collection to build with. So I like going to the pick brick wall and identifying pieces that I think I'm going to use. So I used sand green bricks. Some of those sand green bricks um, are, I actually dabbled with using sand green as a color for our upcoming custom modular music shop, which I think is going to be pretty sweet. Um, but I didn't use sand green. I went, I was trying to replicate a real life building. Um, and that wasn't one of the colors. So that was in the works for that. Um, some of the light blade, I got a bunch of light blade two by two plates. I've used some of those in that creation. Um, and let's see, I'm trying to think some of the other ones that we got. Candle pieces. Oh, candle pieces. Um, I've got plans for those. I, I want to do some more custom modulars. And so I was thinking about like window detail, detailing and stuff like that, similar to the uh, museum um, and the bookshop apartment. So I've used some of the pieces, not all of them, but I definitely want to make sure that I use some of the 
pieces eventually in builds. The kids, on the other hand, I think used all of the pieces that they got from that. So they um, have their Lego collection and they build and they never take anything apart. So anything they build, they have to use like pieces that they either recently got or haven't yet used. And those were not yet used pieces. So they went ahead and put some of their pieces in their creations. So they're getting used. Yeah. <laughs> um, for the doubling of the medieval town square. Oh, yeah. Is it, you just bought a second copy in yes. order to double that. Yes. But someone was wondering if it would be price effective to buy pieces on pick a brick wall or online. This is a really, really good question. And I would tend to say probably your best bet if you're going to double it the way that I did would be to get a second copy. Here's why. The cheapest way to get pieces is through Lego sets or the pick a brick wall. Now, the problem with the pick a brick wall is that they don't often have the selection that you need. Now, you can try to go online to lego.com. They don't have everything you need. Um, and it's somewhat contingent upon supplies. For instance, I think they had the goat uh, on pick a brick online, but as long as supplies last, I think they sold out pretty quickly. The other thing is shipping with that, and sometimes you can get better prices on BrickLink than you can at lego.com. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, but I think the cheapest way is to get pieces from a Lego set. If you were to just buy pieces or buy a Lego set, you may not want all of those pieces. But when you're doubling the size of a set, your intention is to use all of those pieces again. So if you were to take the double Medieval Town Square that I have, or similar concept, you're probably going to be spending a lot more pieces if you just ordered it on lego.com or from Pick a Brick or from BrickLink. So getting a set that you're going to be using almost all the pieces from is by far the most cost-effective way. We ran into this a little bit ago. It was a year ago, actually, when we did the large botanical gardens. And I ended up getting two copies, and it wasn't quite enough because it needed more sand green windows. And it was actually more cost-effective to buy a third copy of the set. Even though we didn't use all of the pieces, we used about a third to half of them just because the pieces were so expensive on BrickLink and they weren't available on Pick a Brick Online. And that's because some of those pieces are pretty rare. Like, you don't find them yeah. in a lot of other sets. Yeah, and it takes a while for BrickLink sellers to get those pieces in stock and to keep them in stock long enough that the price comes down, right? So anytime a new set comes out that has a bunch of pieces that are brand new or pieces with a new color, like the Botanical Gardens has the sand green windows, those hadn't come out for a long time. And so it was pretty expensive to get those on BrickLink. And so you look at that, plus some of the other pieces that I ended up needing for that large version of the Botanical Gardens, it was much more cost effective uh, because there were pieces that I got to put in my collection and use for upcoming projects. And I've used a lot of those pieces since then. Yeah. So it was definitely more cost effective, even though I didn't use every single piece from that. Same thing applies to the Medieval Town Square, getting two copies of that. Yes, I didn't use all the pieces, I used most of them. But if I were to just try to buy those pieces independently, you're talking about multiple orders, shipping kills you. Like, really good pro tip for BrickLink, find sellers that have either free shipping over like $50 or $100 if you're using a large order or a flat rate shipping fee. So we're ordering pieces for our new modular music shop. We've already placed the orders on BrickLink and three of the six orders that I made, flat shipping rate or no shipping charges. But the three that I did, I mean, shipping plus tax added a considerable amount to the orders. So just the cost effectiveness, think about the shipping as basically being sunk costs. Like you're not getting anything for, any pieces for that money. Right. Yeah, so um, do your research. Like if you wanna do something mock related, um, definitely find commonly used pieces. Don't get the brand new pieces or rare pieces to keep the cost down. And of course, minimize your orders as much as possible. Our last question is about BrickLink's Brick Cross train station. Yeah. They want to know, did you pre-order it? And if you were to get it, where would you put it in your city? And would you build a railway for your city? Oh, yeah. Great questions. Um, no, I did not pre-order it. I wish I did. There were so many great sets. The BrickLink program is fantastic. They have, like, castle stuff. They've got some really good stuff there. Um, kind of a Parisian street that they've done recently, a Wild West shop, as well as this train station and some others. I did not order the train station, um, just in part because 
trying to build some custom stuff and that consumes actually quite a bit. Like our custom music shop, we needed to order like 600 pieces, many of which were musical instruments that came out years ago. And so the cost went pretty high on that. Um, don't judge me for how much we spent on that. Uh, but um, so I, I wanted to use our, our resources for that instead of the BrickLink program. I am, however, very interested in getting involved in it because I think the BrickLink program has actually gotten more cost effective. Now there are pros and cons to the, the program. One is, one pro is that the price has gone down. You actually get a pretty good deal for the pieces you get. One of the cons is that some of the stability and building techniques aren't always as legit as uh, Lego sets themselves. But because BrickLink is owned by Lego, I think there's uh, some positive movement in that direction. So um, I don't get it. If I did get it, yeah, it's hard to have that in your modular city and not have a railway. It's hard to have, we would have to completely reconfigure our modular city, which I don't mind doing. But here's the other thing. Then you have to put in a railway. Train, ta train tracks cost a bunch of money. If you want to ballast your train tracks, that costs even more money to get all the plates and tiles to do that. Um, setting up the city in and of itself, making the place for all the railway to make it interesting. You might want to have it go through a mountain or tunnels or go over a bridge or something like that. And that starts adding a lot to it. So I'm very hesitant to start a brand new project of that scale at this point in our YouTube channel size. But for those who love trains and have the money to do it, it could be a really fun project. Oh, absolutely. Like, this is a really cool set. It's something that I'm impressed by just looking at. Would love to build it. Love to get my hands on it at some point in time. Um, but it does, you know, I think the problem with getting some of these large sets, even like the Tournament Temple City, is that, like, oh, I want to include that in a layout. My kids were like, we got to put that with the Ninjago City. And I'm like, okay, but like... That's going to be like multiple base plates. We did a whole video on placing it, and I estimated it was something like 1,500 or so one by two tiles in light blue, translite blue. So it's like, if you can find those on the pick a brick wall, amazing. But you're talking about 90 to 100 dollars of pieces when you think about the plates and the tiles, not even including the base plates because I have a bunch of base plates. So those costs add up. Yeah. That's all we have today. Thanks for watching. Remember to comment below with those questions for next month. And like, subscribe, ring the bell, and always remember to keep, keep building, building together. together.